From vision to completion. In this video, I am covering all the steps, tips, and things to look out for when pouring a concrete pad. I thought this was a woodworking channel. It sort of is, but sometimes you gotta expand your space, you know, because business is booming. Maybe this is your first time working with concrete, or maybe you're just here for a refresher, or maybe you're just here to see me. First things first, concrete and cement are not interchangeable terms. Cement is an ingredient in concrete. Concrete is made up of cement mixed in with a few different aggregates, sand, gravel, and water. Ancient Roman concrete used pozzolana, a volcanic ash, and because of science, most of those structures are still standing today. For structures larger than 200 square feet, a concrete slab is generally recommended. Smaller buildings may not require a concrete foundation, but it can still be beneficial for longevity and preventing issues like rot and pests. There's a link in the description to explore other options such as these if after this video you're thinking, maybe this isn't for me. In most cases, you'll have already picked out where you want to build, but here are a few additional considerations. To ensure your foundation will last, pick a spot on solid soil in an area that won't collect water. While building on a slope of six inches or less can often be handled with some simple leveling and foundation work, a steeper slope requires more careful consideration and potentially professional expertise. Contact local utility providers to find out where the water, gas, septic, and electrical lines run through your property. Often, local ordinances and utility companies require lines to be marked before digging. Obtain permits if your local jurisdiction requires them and best of luck to you if you live in an HOA. Additionally, most zoning laws dictate that all buildings, fences, etc. in a yard must be set back a specific distance from the property line. This setback may range from 6 inches to 3 feet or more. And lastly, out of respect and to prevent complaints that could later interfere with the building process, talk to your neighbors about your project. Remove any vegetation, pesky old stumps that you've been burning for months, fencing, clutter, and anything else that could potentially get in your way. Basically, all you need is some yarn. No reason to overpay for that $19 construction string. Need a tape measure and a few less pointy pencils and some marking spray paint. Gently poke the earth with a pencil at your desired first corner, and then measure down to your next corner. Rotate your body 90 degrees and measure down to the other sides. At this point, you either have a perfectly squared cornered shape or you don't. It's your only two options. If you didn't have landmarks that you could measure into one of these two points and then measure over to these two points and you knew those two buildings were square to each other, you might end up with something like this. And it's easily fixable. The fun thing about your new shape is that it, from corner to corner, is going to be the same measurement. So from this to here and this to here. Doesn't matter if it's square, rectangle, doesn't matter if it's a pentagon, as long as it has four sides. Now, to easily fix that, you can recheck your measurements from here to this side, 13 and a quarter. Hope your building's not this small. 13 and a quarter, that's not. Eyeballing it, you should be able to tell this one is way over. You're gonna move it down to 13 and a quarter. And I'm gonna measure these guys 10 and a half. Ten and a half. We're perfect. Problem being, this guy, a little under 15, way over 15. You can't move this point in because it's going to mess up your lengths for these. If you guys have a diagonal issue, the longer side, you're going to move two points down or over or some direction that you need to go. Let's say it was right there. 13 and a half. 10, 10, 16, still over 16. So this corner and this guy would have to move down and in just a smidge. Thirteen and a quarter. And you're going to continue to do this until it's right. Nine and a half. Oop. Nine. So there, nine and a half and ten. I can move one point down because these two don't line up. These, you don't move one corner. You move both. And that's how you get her done. 
Only thing with moving these points around is again, if you don't have a landmark that you can measure over to find square to another building, you're kind of on your own. So let's hope that doesn't happen. I use pencils for this step, both in my diagram and out on the field, because I find it easier to move around than using the batten boards. We're going to go over those in just a little bit. If you're building the garage that I have included all of the free plans for, that is a 12 by 18 foot structure. That corner to corner measurement is going to be 259 and 5 eighths. Otherwise, if you Google rectangle diagonal calculator, you can find the number that you are looking for. And it's usually easier if you convert it to inches first. Then I run yarn around the structure and mark the ground with paint in case I accidentally step on a pencil. Since you've taken the time to make your concrete slab perfect, you can make what is called a batter board. Not only is it delicious, but it also allows you to move your corner markings farther away so that you have plenty of room to work without needing to refine the diagonal measurement again. My yard has a pretty steep grade. I can either have a lot of my concrete pads sticking up the front, or I can do a little digging to hide it in the back. I am moving enough of the soil to bury the back all but one inch so that drainage and heavy rains don't become an issue. If hand digging doesn't sound too appealing, you can use a garden tiller to level out your ground. Yep, this is the hard labor part. Remove that loose soil, ensuring a level base for the slab. I'm using basic, non-treated 2x6 material, and that's just so I can get a thicker slab because I like mine good and expensive. You can use a thinner 2x4 material. A thicker concrete slab provides increased strength and durability, better resistance to cracking and settling, and improved load-bearing capacity. It also has better sound and vibration absorption, thermal insulation, and increased resistance to damage from heavy machinery or harsh environmental conditions like freezing or thawing. Let's say you want to build that 12 foot by 18 foot shed, so you just call up your lumber store, you order a 12 foot, two 18 foot, two by sixes, they drop them in the yard, you put the corners together, bing, bang, boom. Wrong. There's other steps also. But if you wanted to make even, let's just say, a perfect square because it's easier to mentalize, this guy here is 15 by 15 for my concrete in the center, which means these boards are 15 inches long. These boards are 18 inches because I have to take into account the thickness of my material to make them nice and square. You also don't need to line the corners up and make it all purdy. You can leave them over the edge, and actually when you screw into them, it might prevent a little bit of cracking versus lining them up on the dot, especially if your lumber isn't brand new. Additionally, you can reuse your forms. If you plan to do this again or pour another pad or add something, who knows, you can reuse the forms. And any spots that have knots that are removed, try to avoid those on the interior of your space. This guy should be on the outside. Or if you have any blemishes, I guess I don't, they need to be on the outside as well, just so that your form looks nice and pretty. If I had poured the concrete just like this, this is going to be a little spot, and what's most likely going to happen is when I take this form off, because it's hardened inside of here, it's going to chip it out, and you'll have a chipped spot versus a spot you just have to grind off. If you can bring home or have delivered the proper length of boards, that is your best option. If you are screwing two boards together, be sure to use adequate bracing between the two, and position the connecting board to be a half inch lower so that it's not in line with your forms. This will make screening the pad easier. To make wooden stakes, I cut up four good old cedar pickets. Any three quarter inch material will do as well. If you don't want to save money by making your own stakes, you can buy them at the store. You can use a clamp to hold one end of the board in place while checking it for level. It makes adjustments a breeze. Here's a little something extra for me. I'm connecting this building to my current shop via an enclosed hallway. My garage has a line of block on top of the pad due to the slope of my yard, so I created a footer to build those walls on top of. This also allows me to pour the concrete floor as an incline to easily transition from one building to the other. I'm also creating a curved sidewalk leading up to the entrance. For this, I am slicing a one quarter inch sheet of Luon board. Your local concrete establishment should be able to bring you gravel. Make sure you tell them that it is for a slab foundation. 
There are different grades of gravel, apparently. I ordered one and a half bucket loads. Will your guys' bucket be the same size? It's a mystery. Be sure to use a tamper or a plate compactor to create a firm foundation. Cut the top of your stakes off so that they are a half inch below the top of your forms. Again, this makes the screeding process much more enjoyable. To add strength and durability to your concrete slab, you can purchase rebar, either 3 8 inch or half inch, and place them no farther than 12 inches from the outside of your slab and about 3 to 4 feet apart near the center. Concrete is strong in compression, but weak in tension, meaning that it can easily crack under pulling forces. The rebar corrects this. And here's what everything looks like the night before the big pour. Here you can see I have a stake every 3 to 4 feet, the foundation is nice and leveled, and I did my best with the amount of rebar that I had purchased. Now that we have covered some things that I wish I had known for my first pour, since pouring concrete is a giant stress ball, I didn't film it. Here I have two forms, a 2x4 and 2x6 model. I'm going to show you kind of how I set things up. We're going to do a mini pour, just a small reenactment, so you guys can see the steps in slow motion while I'm not just... Ah. I really wanted to make one out of that thinner Luon board, so just a quarter inch thick board. This is how I made all of the bins on that sidewalk leading up to that garage. However, I wanted to make one a circle for the wife's bird bath. She's close. I've soaked and ran this under the iron like three times. She's close, but I might just have to do it later because I'm not going to get there. If you take a couple of these and you layer them together, I did three just to give me three quarters of an inch. You can bend them in the direction that you want. If you want to do a bendy sidewalk or something and then screw them down, your stakes will hold them into place. Give you a nice arch. This kind of makes things a little more elegant. If you opt to mix bags of concrete from the big box store, I urge you to find the cost difference for mixing it yourself versus having it delivered. It's a lot more wear and tear on your back and wrists, lifting all of those bags one by one. However, it might be more economical if you are planning a smaller building. There is a website to figure out how many bags it would take, whether they're 60, 80, however many pounds they happen to be. So your concrete truck has shown up. You're ambitious. You got your boots on and all of your friends. Solo mission. I get it. Got a little bit of hydration. All the tools set out. Let's pour a pad of concrete. So your concrete guy's gonna tell you how you want that. You want soupy, not soupy? Hey, I ain't touching concrete today. And you're gonna say, all right, cool. Hey, get her a little soupy. See, she's a little soupy. He's gonna have some shoots. He's gonna bring them down. You might have to rake it into place. Mine, smaller raking. Beep, 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 beep. And then you're gonna say, whoa, 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 that's good, because he's not paying attention. And then you're gonna get Get your hoe, get your rake, easier to use a hoe, and you're gonna rake your concrete, right? He's gonna keep going. You're raking, just like this. Except that I'm already done. I'm really hoping one bag gets me all the way there. And again, you're not gonna fill up your entire form. You're gonna do about half of it, rake it, screed it, and then move on because it's gonna start hardening up pretty quick and you're gonna start running out of energy. Once it's in the form, you're gonna take a hoe or something and you're gonna pat down the corners. By giving a little jog, it's gonna bring that water to the top for you. It's also gonna collapse any air bubbles that might be attached to your forms. And with that, you could spray it down with a little bit of water so it doesn't absorb as much. Or you just come in and you do this. And you're going to screech your concrete slowly in sawing motions, not quick. You don't want to back up. It's going to make a bump. So you're just going to go back and forth. Get rid of any rocks that might have popped up. There's this giant clump of grass. It's quite literally the perfect amount of concrete. And then you're going to wait just a couple minutes as it kind of sets up. I know the waiting game isn't great. And you're going to screed it again. Because as you screed it again, 
you're going to take more material off because it is reacting. It's bubbling back up. So screed it just one more time. I'm going to do it the opposite way so you can see. See that concrete we got coming up? You're going to screed it right off the edge. If you have any spots you need to clean up, just grab a finishing trowel. You can hit that, drag it across the surface if you need to. If you push it down, lift this edge up a little bit. And as you go over here, lift this edge up. You don't want to push down on this edge. It's going to create a line. You can purchase one of these guys. He's just an edging tool. Never used an edging tool. He just goes in like this, wherever your edge is. Yikes. And it saws the edge for you. So you find the edge. This is something you're gonna use after it has set up for just a few minutes, so it's a little bit harder, unless you already have a very thick concrete. And if you try the edging tool and you really don't like it, scrape back over the top. They also make what are called these lag anchors. They have a little L shape in them and you can push them down into the concrete so that you have a spot to attach your bottom sill of your building instead of drilling and anchoring that way. To do this, the best thing to do, make a template with a board because your board is gonna be right here, the start of your form. So you want this to be in the center of it. You're just gonna push it down in there and you want the threads to stick up right above your two by four because you want to anchor down to it. Once it's in there like that, make sure it's nice up and straight. There's a lot more information about these anchors in the plans. They have to be within 12 inches from the outside. You want to place them so you're not hitting the 16 inch studs that are going up above. All of that layout for our build is in the plans. Otherwise, there's some helpful tips so that you get them correct. You'll be able to confidently walk on top of your pad within two days after the pour. Mine's set up in about eight hours. Otherwise, it takes up to 28 days for your slab to fully cure and harden. So plan your build accordingly so that you're not stressing out the foundation you worked so hard to make. Thank you for watching. Check out Who's the Boss for free plans, not only for building garages apparently, but if you want to build small woodworking projects, that's kind of what I tinker in.